How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the New York Jets franchise on Madden 20. My name is Football Fan Forever, and this is your Season 4 Preseason Highlight Video Part 1. I was having a hard time trimming things down, and I decided to split this into two videos. So this will have highlights and big plays from the first two preseason games, and I'll release games 3 and 4 next week. So let's not waste any time. We're taking on the Tennessee Titans and their big free agent signing Baker Mayfield in the first game. And Mayfield with five wide throws and interception. This is linebacker Blake Cashman taking it 42 yards to the house. It's great to see him start the preseason off strong as he's in line for some big playing time this season. He's someone I want to get onto the field in nickel packages and obvious passing downs. And here he is making a great play on the jet sweep, stopping Adam Humphreys for a loss of one. He really stood out against the Titans, and we've not seen the last of his highlights here just yet. The Titans' second drive ends with a punt. Here's Boston Scott back to return. He's been our return man for several seasons now. Here he is from the 11-yard line, angling to the right side. He's across the 40 and taken down after a 30-yard return. But we know the defense and special teams are good. What about the offense? We invested heavily in offensive weapons for LaMarcus Albert. Here he is on 3rd and 10, firing for C.D. Lamb, who jukes out a man, hits the gas, and he is gone. 59 yards to the house. The Jets came to play early in this one. 14 to nothing. Just three possessions into this game. Tennessee trying to get back in this one. There's still plenty of time in the first quarter, so the starters are still out there. Here's Naheem Hines around the right side. He breaks a tackle, shakes another one, and is finally taken down by Kel Kohler after a gain of 31. The Jets didn't seal the edge there like they should have. Here's a second and three. Mayfield to Johnny Smith out racing CJ Mosley and it's only Deshaun Elliott able to slow him down. There's a nice gain and it highlights Mosley's struggles in the passing game. Second and seven ball inside the 10. Mayfield from the empty set. He's got time firing to the end zone, and that's knocked away by Marion Marioff, the second-year safety getting a hand on it to force third and seven. Marioff has slid over to strong safety with the signing of Deshaun Elliott, and on third down, there's another play made by Blake Cashman. He really impressed against Tennessee, and we've not seen the last of his highlights yet. Back to the offense here, LaMarcus Albert rolling to his right, fires downfield, there's Christopher Herndon, a tight rope throw, gains 28 yards for the Jets. We had our identity last season as a run first team, and I think we'll still continue to focus heavily on the run, but this preseason allowed me to air the ball out quite a bit. And I like the results. We could make plays through the air. We've got some very dangerous weapons, including the newly selected Kurt Pitts out of Akron. He was a second round pick, and I'm excited for his development. But when we do run the ball, it'll be Willie Sparks and Anthony McFarland sharing the load like they did last year. Sparks isn't going to play in this preseason. I don't want to take the chance that he will get hurt. His starting job is secure. However, Pass protection is still an issue. Here's Elijah Cook recovering the fumble that was forced when he gave up the sack. Thankfully, we're able to hold on to this one. And later on, it's a fourth and inches. We are very good in fourth down the last year. But here's another fumble, and it's actually recovered by the Jets. Reggie Bishop, the second year running back, had the ball stripped away and it fell forward into the waiting arms of Christopher Herndon. We're very lucky to get that one back. And it's second and goal. Albert from the five play action. Firing to the end zone and that is picked off. It wasn't a great read and I'm more likely to force plays like that in the preseason just to figure out what we can get away with for the regular season. So a disappointing end to an otherwise solid drive. Tennessee takes over. Backups are in. This is Tommy Stevens, a third year quarterback. He's 55 overall, but makes that throw look easy and we had a hard time slowing down Stevens. 
there was a definite change in the quality of both pass rush and pass coverage as soon as the backups came in. There's another excellent throw by Tommy Stevens and a great catch in traffic. Xavier McKinney's a little bit too slow to get to that one. And it sets up goal to go Tennessee at the two. Stevens from under center, three tight ends, fires to the right side, and that is caught for the touchdown by Gibson. Tennessee makes it a one-score game. So then it was time to turn over our offense to Harry Arietta. He's in his second season. He hardly got any playing time and did not complete a pass in the regular season, but here he connects with second-round pick Sirius Butte. And Arietta had some pretty good throws in the game against Tennessee. Here's a third and 11. Eugene Hilbert slot left, four-man rush. And firing to the right side, there is Kirk Hits. And he goes down awkwardly at the 13 and stays down. As that's not a good sign if you are a New York Jets fan. Tennessee takes over following another interception. At their own 28-yard line, Stevens to the left side finds Antonio Kinney, who jukes out a defender, runs right back into Renee Dillon and picks up a big chunk of yardage. And some good news in that Kurt Pitts is not expected to miss more than the rest of today's game. We'll see him next week against the Packers. Stevens under center hand off to Hines. There's a nice play. Stephen Donnelly getting some reps at backup safety here. And the very next play, second and 11. Fake handoff, Naheem Hines trying the outside, and again, he is stuffed by Steven Donnelly, who I'd like to get involved with the starters on defense. I love his potential as a box safety, and I think he plays really well close to the line. Our second string offense, however, did have some struggles, and we continued to not be able to move the ball very effectively. It was a combination of poor reads, and just bad blocking. Here's a shot to Sean Holloway that is well defended. And Tennessee takes over with a minute and a half to go in the second quarter. On the plus side of midfield, Stevens from a clean pocket firing over the middle. He's got more yardage. Due for over 100 yards in the second quarter. It was 9 of 9 at this point. And we really had a hard time even slowing him down. Now he rolls to the right, firing inside the 10. And the stop is made there by Gerard Thornton. Stevens 10 of 10 for a buck 37. Here's second and goal from the six. 58 seconds to go on the clock. Stevens rolling to his left. He's got time. Fires to the end zone for another touchdown. Again, Xavier McKinney just a little bit off where he needs to be. And again, it leads to Tennessee points. They're taking the lead here, 17-14. And the Jets will have to complete a hurried two-minute drill here. They do have all three timeouts. And Harry Arietta over the middle finds Sean Holloway at the 46. It's a gain of 20. Two timeouts and 35 seconds with which to work. Arietta. Against a four-man rush, firing up the seam, and that's knocked away from Sean Forbes, a young wide receiver trying to make the roster. That will make it third and ten. Arietta rolls to his right, sets his feet, fires across his body. There's Holloway wide open inside the 30, down to the 27. And the Jets have one more timeout to take a couple shots at the end zone with. Boston Scott to the left of Arietta blitzes brought and Arietta is sacked. It looked like he had a man open just as the pressure arrived and that will set up Brandon McManus for a 57 yard field goal attempt. With the wind kind of at his back, McManus from 57 is good. It splits the uprights and the Jets tie the game going into halftime. So a very fast-paced first half of football. There wasn't a whole lot of defense in the first half. In quarter three now, Tommy Stevens under center. Hand off to Naheem Hines, who's right up the middle. And into the third level, there's a gain of 14. He was very effective on the ground against us. As the Tennessee offense kept marching whenever they got the ball. 
Here's a handoff to Kinney, and he is taken down by the face mask there. That's Bryce Huff getting flagged, and it gives the Titans good field position. Here's a third and five ball on the 20-yard line. Stevens out of the empty set, rolls, look to his left, and he's intercepted. There's Blake Cashman a second time, and he won't lose this foot race. His second pick six of the night. Blake Cashman, everybody. Wow. Could he be the next star on this loaded defense? He's been making big plays all night. One part of the defense that did kind of struggle was the backup defensive line. They didn't get a lot of pressure in the pass game, and there were very few times that they made stops in the run game. There's Trey Groves on the stop there. And that leads to a third and ten. Stevens out of the split shotgun, Kenny to his left, Hines to his right. And Stevens will check it short for Hines, who can't juke out rookie safety Gerard Thornton, who's taken down after a gain of four, and will head back to the offense. Arietta still in the game, takes a snap from under center, drifts back in the pocket, and fires over the middle. There's Sean Holloway across the 45 to the 47. Holloway's a better route runner than a lot of the younger wide receivers on our team, and it really showed against the backups here. Here he is on a third and three, getting some nice separation and hauling in the pass from Arietta to move the sticks. The Jets will come out in a two tight end formation on first down. Less than a minute to go in the third quarter, Arietta well protected, airs it out, and there's Kahali Waring inside the 10 at the 6. He spent all of the last season on the practice squad, but has a shot to crack the active roster if he keeps making plays like that. On third and goal, Arietta with pressure incoming is just off the mark for Harvey Addison. That could have been six, but the Jets will have to settle for three instead. Lead is out to ten as we're into the fourth quarter. Tommy Stevens trying to engineer a comeback, firing to the right side, and that's nearly intercepted. Quincy Wilson nearly had another preseason pick six, and the Jets will take over on their own 33. This is Josiah Doolittle, the rookie running back, getting some reps there. I wanted to see what he could do because he's one of the more interesting UDFAs on this team. Here Arietta rolls away from the blitz and what a catch by Warren. One-handed over the middle with the defender draped all over him. Those are the kinds of plays that help you make the roster. On first and ten, here's a rollout dump off the series Butte. Oh, and he runs over a defender. That's fellow rookie Khalid Falk, who isn't even in the same weight class. Butte has got seven inches and 70 pounds on Falk. As Reggie Bishop with a nice carry to the left side, that'll help shake off the memories of your fumble earlier as the Jets push their lead out to 13 with another field goal. It's still a two-possession game, however, as Stevens will go to the air on second down. Looking to the right side, he's intercepted. Renee Dillon, the rookie cornerback, takes this one to the house. It's the Jets' third pick six of the day, and it gives them a commanding lead here as they will go for two to try and make it a three-touchdown game. Arietta from the bunch shotgun, fires to the end zone, and that's knocked away from Holloway. He's not great in traffic and fails to haul that one in, but the lead is still 19. Tennessee wasn't done yet, however, as Stevens drives them all the way down the field and finds a wide open Thaddeus Moss in the end zone. That was a blown coverage by rookie safety Gerard Thornton. With just over two minutes to go, Titans are back on offense. Stevens on a third and ten. He's well protected against a three-man rush. Has all day and finally finds the left side. That's Antonio Kinney fighting across the 40. And that will take us inside two minutes. Game pretty much over here. Just a minute 38 to go. Tennessee down 12. Needing to convert a fourth and one. And this pass is nearly intercepted by Dillon again. And the Jets will take over on downs. That will do it for this one. New York triumphs 36 to 24 over the Tennessee Titans. Blake Cashman had a huge game. His two pick sixes were the difference in this one. As the Jets only won by 12. 
Our starters played well in limited action today. They only got one quarter because it was the preseason. Game two, they'll get the entire first half. So that should be a better litmus test for how our team is going to look as we are taking on the Super Bowl winning Green Bay Packers. They're without Aaron Rodgers, who retired after taking home his second Super Bowl title and another MVP. But they picked rookie Sean Cooper in the draft. And Cooper wastes no time connecting with Devontae Adams here over the middle for a gain of 24. As Green Bay selected Cooper with the 32nd overall pick in the draft. And they have once again struck gold at the quarterback position. Cooper has no real weaknesses here as a rookie. He's only 73 overall, but not for long. He's got hidden development and that should go up very quickly. Cooper under center on second and 10. He's back to pass and immediately goes down. It's James Delgado welcoming Sean Cooper to the league with a sack back at the 42. That will lead to a punt and LaMarcus Albert from his own 23 fires. There's serious butte to the 40 yard line. As the Jets are moving the ball well through the air again. That's a great sign for this offense. Albert on second and eight, rolling to his right, on the move, deep down the field, Jamison Crowder at the 12. What a phenomenal throw, that's Albert's second great throw on the run in as many games. And just a few plays later, the Jets are knocking on the doorstop. First and goal from the one, McFarland on the pitch, and he is in for the touchdown. Jets take an early 7-0 lead. How would Green Bay respond against the number one scoring defense in the league last year? Here's Cooper off play action. Fires downfield. There's Devontae Adams again. Cooper did not shy away from targeting Adams early and often in this one, completing his first four passes to the veteran wide receiver. Ball inside the 20 at the 15. Adams in motion. Cooper with the handoff and Quinney and Williams bursts through the line to bring down Aaron Jones for a loss of two. That will lead to a third and seven from the 12. Cooper out of the shotgun, three wide receivers in the formation and Cooper fires to the right side. That will be caught and in for the touchdown. Albert Wilson with the grab. He left Levi Wallace in his dust and Green Bay ties it up. Albert out of the shotgun on first and ten. McFarland to his right. Pressure incoming. Albert fires downfield and that is caught by Kadero Hodge on the plus side of midfield. Albert over 100 yards on his first six passes as he's been moving the ball really well through the air here in the preseason. But don't forget about his ability to pick up yards with his legs. Here's a nice scamper for Albert picking up 18 on the read option. And that will lead to a first and goal from the three empty set. Albert rolling to his left and he is in for the touchdown. New York goes back on top thanks to the legs of LaMarcus Albert. And take a look at rookie left tackle Elijah Cook. He's matched up against a veteran pass rusher in Preston Smith. And he gets beat, but Cook does not give up and turn Smith inside out. He keeps fighting until the whistle blows. And that's one thing I really like about our young left tackle. With 38 seconds to go in the first quarter, Cooper rolls right into a sack. There's Quinion Williams back at the 17 as our defense got plenty of pressure on the rookie quarterback. Here's a carry for Josiah Doolittle up the middle in space and taken down at the 32. He might not win any races, but I like the way he runs. Green Bay will get it back, facing a third and seven from their own 14. Cooper stepping up in the pocket and down he goes. Great coverage downfield and Mass Johnson gets to Cooper for the third New York Jets sack in this first half. Albert against the blitz and second down fires a slant to C.D. Lamb who stays down with an injury. And immediately the prize free agent signing for the Jets leaves the field. We'll get an update on him in just a minute. It's a dislocated shoulder as we'll have an injury update for him after the game. But with Lamb out, who would step up for the first team offense? How about last year's second round pick, Eugene Hilbert? This is a big preseason for him to show what he can do because he missed a lot of last year with an injury. 
I think this is my favorite play of the preseason thus far. Coming up, here's Albert. Uh, play action, rolling to his left, firing to the end zone for serious Butte, and it's hauled in for the touchdown. What a sensational throw with pressure in his face. Albert gets this one away and puts it into a tiny window. And then Sirius Butte hauls it in, gets two body parts down in the end zone. And the Jets will take a 21-7 lead here with under four minutes to go in the second quarter. Here's Sean Cooper taking off. Everyone's covered. And Cooper will slide down for another Green Bay punt. Time for New York to run a two-minute drill. Albert's been good through the air, but there's a sack given up by Elijah Cook at the two-minute warning. As Green Bay started to get some pressure here. Very next play, second and 17. Albert drifting back, pressure and coming, gets this one away, and it's intercepted by Jire Alexander. There was little to no separation there. Albert rushed the throw, and it turns into a Green Bay field goal attempt with a minute 23 to go. This from 50, and it's a fake, and it's immediately swallowed up by Marion Marriott. Not sure what Green Bay was trying to do there, but the Jets will take over with good field position and a timeout with which to work. First and 10, Albert under pressure and down he goes. That killed our drive right there as we'll head to halftime with the score 21 to seven. Jets winning in just about every single statistical category except for turnovers. It was an enjoyable first half and then it was time to see what the backups could do. Play action, first and 10, Arietta over the middle. There's Kurt Pitts across midfield to the Green Bay 45, a 25 yard connection as the Jets open the second half with the ball. That would not lead to points, however, as this would be Ryan Tannehill, the veteran quarterback suiting up for Green Bay in the second half, and he moves to six with a 23 yard completion on third and long. Jets up by two scores. Here's the blitz and down goes Tannehill. Keith Gethers gets through for the sack. He saw a lot of playing time at middle linebacker in the second half. Here's a shot taken on third and 18 as that is knocked away. A couple Jets in the area including Xavier McKinney. As Green Bay will get the ball back. Our offense didn't do a whole lot here early in the third quarter. And there's Gethers with a nice run stop there. Third and eight. A lot of third and longs for Green Bay as we did pretty good on first and second down. As Gethers gets a hand on that one. He really showed up early in the third quarter here for the Jets. We haven't seen a lot of these second team offense thus far because Arietta struggled with his accuracy. Here's a quick slant to Eugene Hilbert that's taken upfield for a nice gain. But more often than not, Arietta's throws weren't hitting the mark. Here's a first and 10 from the plus side of the 50. Arietta unpressured and is wildly off the mark for Hilbert. And on third and eight, with Boston Scott to his right, flag immediately flies in. Arietta takes a deep shot, and this is nowhere near a wide open Kurt Pitts, and leads to a 61 yard field goal attempt for Brandon McManus. This kick right hash is. Off the crossbar, just inches short and no good. So Green Bay takes over on the plus side of midfield. Excellent field position for this drive. Here's Randy Hope with a nice run stop for a gain of just two. And a couple plays later, Hope just throws aside the right guard and breaks Huntley up in the backfield. Those are the kinds of plays we'd like to see him make. Our run defense was pretty good, but the backup pass defense was not. Here's Renee Dillon getting burned in zone coverage. That's supposed to be his strength, but he was out of position, and he doesn't have the makeup speed to compete with a lot of the wide receivers here in this league. As Green Bay adds three, Arietta misses another throw, and we're into the fourth quarter. Green Bay down 11. From their own 18, Tannehill back to pass. Has all day to throw, fires deep up the middle, and that is hauled in. They split the safeties, and now Keith Gethers is hurt, clutching at that ankle. And he'll be checked out in the locker room for the Jets. 
Tannehill out of the split shotgun ball at the 29. He's moved the ball well through the air here today. Now steps up in the pocket, and we finally get some pressure, forcing a throwaway. That's Rakeem Winston, the second-year left end, getting close to Tannehill. Second and eight from the 15, and a nice play there by Gilbert McGraw. He was selected in the fifth round of this draft, and he had three tackles for a loss this game. Arietta's day is done. This is Edward Arnold, the third string quarterback, firing over the middle. He'll find Eugene Hilbert, who breaks a couple of tackles to the 47. One thing that was consistent today is that Eugene Hilbert was getting open and he was making plays. It was great to see him have a good game. And it meant that I was targeting him a lot and sometimes that got me into trouble. This one is intercepted and it would be returned 52 yards to the house. And that's a potential game tying score. Now Green Bay gets to go for two. A conversion here ties the game. Tannehill goes empty against a four-man rush. Steps to the right. Fires off target to the end zone as the Jets' two-point lead is still intact. But the offense is going to have to play better, and it starts on third downs. Arnold play action from under center. Fires downfield. He had a man wide open and really overthrew Sirius Buttes. Both our backup quarterbacks this game had accuracy issues, and it let Green Bay right back into this one. First and 10, up the right sideline that catch is made. Quincy Wilson getting beat there as Green Bay marched the ball down the field. Three and a half minutes to go, Tannehill stepping up in the pocket, and he runs out of time. Everyone covered downfield, and Rakeem Winston gets in there for the sack. It's good to see some rotational pass rush as we really lack that against the Titans and to some extent against the Packers as here's an excellent grab. Levi Wall is out there and he gets mossed. It wasn't a good look for the veteran cornerback. Green Bay trying to take the lead. Just over a minute to go, floating out to the right side. That will make it first and goal from the seven. Green Bay going hurry up. A field goal will give them the lead, but they want more than that. Tanhill to the end zone, and that is caught for the touchdown. This would be reviewed, but Tyler Croft kept both feet in bounds, and Green Bay takes a 26-21 lead. Still New York with one timeout, 30 seconds, and Edward Arnold in the game is going to take their shots. Here's Eugene Hilbert at the 36, and New York will have one more shot for a game-winning Hail Mary. Against a four-man rush, Arnold fires to the end zone for Sirius Butte, and that is knocked away. Unlikely he would have come down in bounds as Green Bay takes this one 26-21. Our backup offense did not score at all, which is a little bit disappointing as we moved the ball well in the first half and really poorly in the second half. The game definitely changed once the starters were pulled going into the second half as we struggled to move the ball on offense and struggled to get off the field on defense. Ryan Tannehill is still a serviceable quarterback and he was making a lot of great throws. We weren't getting a lot of pressure on him aside from the Rakeem Winston sack. So I'm hopeful that our backup pass rushers can bounce back against the Dallas Cowboys. I'm really excited for game three. That's when you get three quarters of playing your starters, and that's the closest we're going to get to a full game with them in before the season starts. I feel like the preseason has been a good one thus far for our first team offense and defense, so I'm excited to see what they can do with three quarters of play. So thank you all so much for watching. That'll do it for this episode. Let me know down in the comments who you like from the preseason thus far, who you want to see more of, and any storylines that are particularly interesting to you. Have a good one, everybody.